Life Audio. Hello, thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, John 18, 1. This episode is brought to you by He Gets Us, a nationwide campaign all about raising the respect and relevance of Jesus. Did you see the Super Bowl ads about Jesus? Are you wondering how you can get involved? He Gets Us is a multi-year effort to raise the respect and relevance of Jesus in the United States. Thanks to this unprecedented campaign, millions of Americans are discovering the life-changing impact of Jesus, and we want you to be a part of the movement. Join more than 45,000 He Gets Us fans getting the latest updates, inspiration, prayer ideas, and easy-to-share resources via text message by subscribing to our fans' community. To do so, text FANS to 70193. By being a fan, you can get exclusive updates on new ads, events, and other exciting news related to the He Gets Us movement. We'll also keep you inspired by giving you access to reading plans, prayer guides, and other tools to help on your spiritual journey. Join this community of like-minded individuals who share your passion for spreading the love of Jesus. Simply text FANS to 70193 to join today. Have you ever found yourself in a moment with your loved ones where you were there, but you weren't all there? Let's be honest. We've all given our leftovers to our biggest fans instead of our best. For Dr. Josh and Christy Straub, marriage and leadership coaches and hosts of the Famous at Home podcast. With a realistic, grace-filled look at the struggles families face, we cover topics designed to help you become a rock star under your roof, set healthy rhythms between work and home, and build a rock-solid marriage. Because the greatest red carpet you'll ever walk is through your front door. Today's Bible verse is John 18, 1. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. The more I reflect upon Christ's journey to the cross, the more I'm in awe of his determined, steadfast, unyielding love, a love so deep and pure, so strong and immovable. My brain struggles to fully grasp its depth. Scripture tells us on the night before Christ's death, he gathered his disciples, including Judas, the man who would soon betray him, close for a solemn and sacred meal, during which he told them plainly that one of them within this tightly knit circle would betray him, and all of them would abandon him. But even so, as John 13 verse 1 states, he loved them to the end, or according to some translations, to the uttermost. Then, after giving them numerous assurances that although he would soon leave them, he would eventually return for them, that he would prepare a place for them, that he wouldn't leave them as orphans, but would send them a supernatural, perfect, and ever-present helper, the Holy Spirit, and that they would find strength through their ongoing connection to him. Then in John 17, he prayed for them, asking God to protect them through the power of his name and to unite them so that they could live as one, in the same way that he, God the Son, was one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Today's verse picks up after that prayer, and it tells us that he led his disciples across the Kidron Valley, an area that would have provided a deeply emotional, unforgettable image of the cost of redemption, an image that probably took on increased significance to the disciples when they looked back upon it after Christ's death. Because this valley Jesus and his disciples crossed over, it would have been teeming with reminders of death. Early Thursday morning, the priests would have killed thousands, over 250,000, in fact, Passover lambs. And they all had to be slaughtered within a two-hour period. The amount of blood flowing through the temple sewer pipes and into the valley just east of the temple would have been immense. It would have left the land itself stained red, and it would have smelled like death. And then that fateful night came, that night when Jesus, our Savior, willingly walked across that valley, seeing the blood-saturated land, knowing the sin it atoned for and the sin which he soon would bear. 
knowing that soon it would be his blood poured out to atone for all mankind. His beloved disciples who walked across that valley with him, all of the families that brought their lambs to the temple so the priests could sacrifice them to pay for their sins, for the corrupt priests who would soon condemn him, and the Roman soldiers who would drive in the nails, and for us as well. With each determined step, Christ declared, I love you, all of you. I choose you so much that I choose this. Notice also that Jesus brought his disciples with him, as he had for every other aspect of his ministry. They had witnessed his miracles and his agony. He brought them with him on the mountain when he was transformed before them, and they caught a glimpse of his pre-incarnate glory. And he brought them with him as he walked across that valley and then into the Garden of Gethsemane in such anguish that his sweat contained blood. As God's son, Jesus knew precisely what he would soon face, and yet with every step across that blood-stained land, with every prayer in the garden, with every step towards Golgotha, and with his last breath, he chose death because he chose us. He chose you. And all he's asking in return is that we choose him. And when we do, we receive the most precious gift known to man, eternal life spent united with the one who loved us enough to die, but then who had the power to raise again so that we can experience eternal life with him. And we receive that eternal life when we believe that Jesus is who he says he is, the sinless son of God that he did what he said he did, that he died on the cross for you and I, for our sins, that we deserved the penalty that he paid, but that he paid it so that we don't have to. And when we believe that his death and resurrection through that, we receive life. That's all it takes. When we believe and we receive, and I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that now. If you have not yet trusted in Christ for salvation, you can do that today. And if you have questions, I invite you to contact me through my website. I would love to answer any questions you have. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross, to pay the penalty that we deserve, to remove our sins so that we can be forgiven, so that we can experience eternal life. Lord, we know that we have sinned against you. We have rebelled against you. We have not loved others and you as we should. And we believe that Jesus Christ paid the penalty that we deserve. We believe he is your son, the sinless lamb, the son of God, who died on the cross for us. And Lord, we receive the forgiveness that is available to us through faith in him. Forgive us of our sins. And Lord, help us to give our lives to you. We choose you because you first chose us. We choose to live in relationship to you. We choose to follow you. Teach us what that means. And Lord, for those of us who already know you, we just make that decision again and again and again because you are worth our life. You are worth our worship. You are worth our love and you are worth our praise. Thank you for the price that you paid. Thank you that you loved us so very much, that you wanted to be united with us so very much, that you are willing to pay it all. Remind us of that when we feel alone and afraid. Remind us of the depth of your love. Help us to experience that love and transformation through your love and grace every day. Lord Jesus, it is in your name, our Savior, that we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Has fear stolen your peace? I'm Jennifer Slattery, lead host of the Faith Over Fear podcast, helping you fight your fears and grow your faith. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com.